which is called the Terminal Sales Building. And it is the former home of Sub Pop Records. They, uh, when they, you know, when they moved out of their little record store storefront, when they first, you know, started putting out records, they rented the top two floors up there where they could go out on the roof and, uh, and through all the big Sub Pop heyday, they were located here when they were, when uh, John Poneman was courting the Western State Hurricanes, trying to sign us, he gave us the tour of the old headquarters, and everyone is very careful to point out the places where Kurt Cobain, yeah. you know, wrote some graffiti on the bathroom wall. It's kind of, it was all like, sort of taped off. Pretty, uh, pretty cute days, but Sub Pop has since moved away from there, tragically. And then the real super duper Seattle moment is this building here, which is now the Vane Hair Salon, but which is the former Vogue, which was the venue. All the best grunge rock concerts happened. The Vogue was where you know, Soundgarden famously played all their biggest rock shows. All those bands. That was the big. That was the big venue for the early grunge years, and of course, you know, it had a capacity of about 180. But at the time, that was uh, that was the big time here. And it's now, I guess, kind of appropriately, a hair salon because grunge was really mostly about hair. Did you sense that there was sort of this, this shift in the audiences where people, there was a core of people who always went to places, but then as the sea became a big national deal, did it suddenly became uh, sort of crowded people who had never been to shows? Well, yeah, two things happened. I mean, Seattle became the mecca for young people all across the country, mm -hmm. and so it was there were 50,000 new kids here that hadn't been here six months before. Mm -hmm. But that was just, I mean, that, I think that improved the city. It was great you know, because you could, you'd have a show on Tuesday night, three completely unknown bands, and there would be 500 paying customers there. It was a, it was pretty exciting. The, the bad part of it, the downside to it, was that the music scene and the, and the style started to trump, or started to become something that had never previously existed. You know, the, the grunge that became a national phenomenon really wasn't, oh, well, we're gonna have to go through the private drive, I'm afraid. This new building, brand new space here. Um, you know, the actual music that was, being made in Seattle in 1989, you know, most of it was not very good. Well, because I was trying to think back when I was in college, you know, in the early 80s, and I don't